I am. I am. Well, what sort of example is that? Come on. Put it down. The TV detective needs a great location. And the traditional British setting is the country estate. A place so far removed from reality, almost anything could happen. Miss Marple is often set within the world of Miss Marple's own village, St Mary Mead, um, which, you know, although it seems to be uh, this uh, genteel English village, um, you know, it has the, the murder rate of the Bronx. I've long held that Miss Marple has what I would call forensic intuition developed to the point of genius. Oh, the result, she tells me, of a lifetime's education in an English village. Well, uh, one does see so much evil, I fear. There's a sort of fun that we have with that, but that also plugs into, I think, a quite a deep and strong tradition within British fiction that really the worst things are to be found, not in the more obviously uh, violent or deprived areas of our cities, but within that kind of genteel middle-class society. My dear vicar, you look quite frightened. It's, it's not a place, it's a time, and it's an attitude. And uh, a lot of detective fans love that. And in a sense, what you have with Midsummer Murders and with Inspector Morse is trying to keep that old style, that 1930s, 1940s time, by setting them somewhere so rural that you'd never see a mobile phone. Morse is set in Oxford, uniquely straddling old and new world England. Its ability to time slip is a vital part of the appeal. What they did with Morse is they kind of created a, a romantic, highly stylized netherworld. And despite the fact it was set in modern times, it didn't feel like it was necessarily modern times. You know, amidst the dream inspires of Oxford, many scenes in cozy Oxfordshire pubs with foaming pints of brown ale. Cheer up. It didn't seem like it was 1990s Britain. It seemed like an old-fashioned type of Britain, which I think people just found heartwarming to immerse themselves in for an hour once in a while. Where Morse is distinctly English, Bergerac brought an escapist, almost American atmosphere of sun, sea, surf and glamour from the Channel Islands. I couldn't identify you a single person who was ever born in Jersey, but I can tell you Bergerac and anybody else could. You know, Bergerac is Jersey. You even sort of think of Bergerac as being the shape of Jersey because, you know, the, uh, in the title sequence, the words, you know, the, the island mutates into the words Bergerac. The island is literally Bergerac. You need a sense of place. That is the most important thing in the world to have. When people turn on to a their cop drama, they want to be sure where they are. So, for example, uh, Morse is in Oxford. You know where you are. You're in Oxfordshire. Uh, Bergerac was in Jersey, and you turned onto this beautiful island. And you knew where you were. It had a location, a habitation, a name, and you had a great. There was a great sense of identity about that, and you were aware of the community that lived in that place, and that's very, very important. And if the people who are watching can identify with that community in whatever way, then you're okay. There you are. Where's his yacht? Over there. Oh, very nice. A bit problematic with Jersey because most <laughs> we portrayed a society which was rich and um, self-satisfied in many ways. Bergerac inhabited an alien place where people spoke English with a strange accent. Say again. What do you mean you don't know? Quite different to Glasgow, Gosh, which in 1983 was an alien place where people spoke English with a strange accent. Michael, we're going to take it apart, search it from top to bottom. It's, it is very different from the, the glamorous Jersey of uh, Bergerac, say, but that doesn't mean that it's any less appealing to watch something like that. It's the sense of the real location, and at, with a programme like Taggart, which is all about the reality of it, it's all about making something that's genuine and realistic and makes you feel like you're really part of the location. Scenically, it's so different, you know, from most of the English cities. Uh, uh, architecturally, uh, it looks different. Uh, even the light's different. Having it set in somewhere as, as urban and gritty and realistic as that just made the, the crimes all the more horrible, the reality all the more stark, and got you involved in the programme all the more.
Well, I can certainly believe in, in Taggart more than I can believe in Midsummer Murders or Bergerac. It's just kind of unlikely that the number of murders committed in these other places would really take place. But in Glasgow, <laughs> you know, you can kind of believe it. I mean... Britain's roughest, toughest, grittiest, maddest city is Glasgow. That's just a fact. So if you're going to make a credible and authentic crime show, there's nowhere better to set it because you can have insane crimes going on every single week for 25 years or however long it is that Taggart's been going for. And people will sit at home, they won't think that's slightly implausible that they've had another murder in Glasgow. They'll think, yep, yeah, another murder in Glasgow. <laughs> there's ten a minute, isn't there? For forensic detectives, of course, the setting has shrunk from island, city or even village proportions to a single room. Maybe the setting has retreated inside the body itself. Rigor beginning to develop in the neck. The fingers and the limbs in general. Miss Marple never did autopsies. She never needed to um, use the little grey cells. But, uh, but, you know, the characters in Wake and the Dead or the characters in Silent Witness, they need to actually investigate what's going on inside the corpse. What do you mean? TV detectives are operating more in the here and now, but the best man is to keep a foot in the fantasy world of old England. And a good TV detective will be doggedly determined with a maverick streak, able to penetrate the clutter of detail that fogs less able minds.